What is going on, dudes? Welcome to another Tipplers Parlor. This is our episode 9, our 10th video. Um, so we've made it to 10. We're doing something right. So confusing. <laughs> yeah, we started with zero, that's why. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome. Uh, uh, start tonight. I, I, I don't actually don't. I didn't ask if you were drinking anything. I know you said you were pretty tired. I yeah. So I was rocking um, our baby to sleep, yeah. and I fell asleep. <laughs> so then I was drinking a, a lot of water to um, uh, wake myself up, and uh, I ended up pouring myself. We had a, a little bit of vodka, so I, I poured uh, vodka on ice, and it is uh, watermelon vodka. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm just Cheers. drinking. Uh, uh, tonight I didn't. I didn't go buy anything. Um, so I just had what I had in the fridge, which is awesome for me, anyways. But I got. Uh, I know I've had this, but it's the White Claw. But I've got the White Claw pure tonight, <laughs> which I absolutely love because it's mm -hmm. it's not sweet. You know, there's no carbs. There's no like sugar. Like it's it's not like the typical sweet stuff. And uh, it tastes like just like regular water, you know, sparkling water that I like, Perrier, something like that. And, uh, you know, it's alcoholic, 5%. So uh, that's why I just grabbed. I grabbed one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as alcohol and beers and stuff, we got a good one today. Uh, today, we, we, we've we touched in the uh, past. I don't remember if it was last episode or the episode before that. It would have been uh, two, two episodes, episodes ago. ago. Yeah. We, uh, we touched on... Um, Oh, brewing, brewing our own beers. Oh, and I, I think brew my own beer. it's, it's actually going to happen. Right? Yeah. And I think we're actually going to do it. Um, over the next couple weeks, we're going to try to get something done, something started. But it's a reality. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Uh, let's, let's, I'm going to start with today's deal of the week. I actually didn't talk to you about it. Um, but what yeah, I've got, it's, good. it's it's a good learning. I like <laughs> to jump into things fast where, uh, where you actually may get a surprise out of me. <laughs> so let's hear it. Yeah. So, um, today, and let me pull up the tab. I have got, uh, it's just, um, I don't know. I saw it on, on um, here. Let me switch my screen here. Um, uh, steam. I saw it on Steam today, actually. And today there's a free weekend of Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Um, which is a good game. I don't know if you've ever played it. It's fun. And, uh, it, you know, it's a typical... Have, have you ever played any of the Tom Clancy? Uh, like, Rainbow, oh, yeah. Rainbow Series? Oh, yeah. Um, never Rainbow Six. It was always... Um... Uh, what was the Tom Clancy we always played that had uh, Splinter Cell? Uh, yeah, so there's I I I've played a lot of the Splinter Cell. So yeah, Conception, uh, um, Blackout. Um, I don't even remember him. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, I remember him. <laughs> but uh, my favorite was um, the one where you had Spy and Merc and uh, UI and uh, our. <laughs> right fred you and i um, right but, right mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah, so we would uh we would play just either locally or on xbox live wherever we were and it would just be like you know a couple friends and we would play the the spies versus merc uh online match which is a typical 1v4 1v3 you know mm -hmm. type of game and it was done like years before that was kind of popular it's become more popular now with games but um it was done back then it, and it was done quite well. I think it was very good. And so, like, you would, you looked at this game, and, and for me, at least, it was like, oh, my gosh, whoever's not a spy, like, just <laughs> the Merc just has such a disadvantage. And then, uh, yeah, mm. and then Fred comes out. Yeah, and but just if, you, if you had somebody people. just like Fred who could wield that position. Yeah, it, it was, was... He was so good. I'm like, he just made me look stupid in my game. <laughs> like, I was just like, I, maybe I'll try Merc. And then I'm like like you know and then he goes and wipes the floor with me like cause i can't play merc like i'm like I, my best chance is to be a spy yeah it was mm -hmm. but that was a lot of fun i would love for them to bring back that they did they did spy versus merc yes oh really in, uh conviction 
But that's that not even good. that's not even a next gen like that's a 360 game, right? Yeah, that's better than Xbox. That's true, but I mean that's <laughs> that's an old game. It's probably not even backwards <laughs> compatible to if our. We were talking systems. about six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they should. I, I think there's talks of a new one coming out soon, and. Um, I'm gonna look that up. I think they should bring it back. But here, this is Rainbow, the Rainbow Six games, um, and the Rainbow Six games have always been pretty solid. I think they've made like uh, on the MLG tour, like they, they're pretty good. Um, but today, this weekend, uh, at least on Steam, probably on the Ubisoft store as well, or whatever that's called now, or whatever, uh, Rainbow Six Siege is free. It's a free weekend. It might even be on Xbox too. I don't know, but it's free weekend. Um, and on top of that, until June 10th, there is discounts on the, the different packages. So the regular game is 50% off, which is big. So instead of paying, you know, 20 bucks, you're paying 10 bucks. You get a good game, a good game. That's still popular. You check it on here on Twitch. I mean, it's still got like, I think tonight it had like 40,000 people watching it. So, um, you know, and then uh, they they just released the, the Division Two, which is a game I've been playing a lot of lately. Um, and that game, I mean, that only has like five hundred people watching that game, and that's brand new. Siege has been out for four years or something, so uh, it's a good game. They keep updating it, they keep servicing it, so that's good. Then you get the deluxe package here, so twenty nine ninety nine. It's only eleven ninety nine, so two bucks more, and you get the whatever the deluxe package is. I don't know the difference. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Blacklist came out in, um, I think, 2012. Did I say Blacklist? Splinter Cell Blacklist first gameplay demo, 2012. And on Reddit, they're talking about, uh, is anyone still playing um, Blacklist by versus Mercs on PC? And this is, this is a talk, six posts from 2018, December 14th of 2018. Hmm. Okay. So if it's something on on PC, that would be fun to play on PC. I didn't think of that. I was saying, you know, old old gen consoles, but that'd be fun to do on PC if it was actually something still going on PC. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Mhm. So, oh, I it's one of those things that I could easily get into. I will be right back. Go ahead and keep talking. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, I would say let's get into the next section. And, um, like, uh, basically, I found this site on um, uh, how to brew. And uh, if we can go ahead and talk about that just for uh, a short while, uh, as long as I find my... Um, there we go. And... I I think I can screen share, which we'll see how uh, ugly this gets. Do do do. I am sorry for usually Josh takes care of all of this. There we go. So, um, this is how to make beer, and uh, really, I just wanted to break it down to the basics, and um, I'll um, see where we can go from here. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you're going to need certain items to do it at home, uh, rather than buying kits online or making your own, depending on how um, invested you want to be or how... Um, good you are with your hands, I guess. So there's a kettle of um, fermenting uh, airlock, uh, which I think that's down here. Um, this is a bubble airlock, and I think that's when the uh, yeast gets in and um, a bubble comes up. It's. Um, are you screen sharing? Sorry, I'm back. 
Yeah, uh, no, no problem. Yeah, I, screw I, cherry I, I, doesn't I, work. I, I don't know why it's not working. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, garbage. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, so, uh, can you go that uh, link that I showed you for the how to make beer? Yeah. Yep. Got it up right now. Okay, and then <clears throat> before um, our uh, great uh, process. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it, I think this actually this website breaks it down pretty good. Um, it's something that um, Josh actually he's had a lot of time to look into. Um, unfortunately, I am still new at this, but uh, it gives you the four basic steps: prepare, brew, ferment, and bottle. And um, these are these are four steps that I'm I am ready to get into. So preparing. Um, and it basically, when you were gone, I was saying that there's people that, that you can buy kits, or there's those who who like to work with with work with their own hands, and they may want to just put these things together at home. So mm-hmm. you're gonna need a kettle, uh, the fermenting airlock. You probably have to buy uh, a funnel. It says optional. I mean, that's easy to make or even find around the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, sanitizer. I'm not sure what what would uh, maybe that's what we can special. Look that's uh so it's the i forget what it's called but it's like uh like sand something i forget the name of it uh there's a popular one everybody uses it's a special food grade sanitizer that you have this, to you don't contaminate um the 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 mash uh no this is for fermenting so so okay so so the process is you have your kettle or mm-hmm. before that a mash um which mm-hmm. you see on this website they've got an igloo uh, cooler converted into a mash tub and those are very popular um just for people to buy i see those a lot so with the mash tubs um you it's so that's for like all grain um you create your own like flavor like it's all grain um what i've seen or what i'm gonna start off with just because i went to a local homebrew store for my recipe and all of their like 40 recipes or more were um malt extract which is like a uh it's gonna come out as like a like 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 peanut butter almost (laughs) you know maybe a little thinner it's it'll it'll pour out a little i think but it's 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 in a tub like that right last time i tried to pour peanut butter (laughs) it's hard i had to use a spoon Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that's what uh that's what I'm going to be using just for my first time. I want to go all grain. And I found out today that um, my brother-in-law might have one of these extra mash tubs, um, this igloo com- thing. And he said he'll uh, he'll sell it to me. So I'm, really? Yeah, I might, I might have one of those because I, I want to go all grain. So I, I, all grain is like you doing it yourself. Like it's you tweaking everything yourself. You know, the malt extract is you just pouring in somebody else's thing based uh, on uh, you know their recipe so it's like easier uh-huh. and the you know the all grain takes longer i mean it could add extra two hours but it uh that's not bad but well two hours to like a three hour brew day on top of it you know so i mean it could you know could turn something into a five hour thing i smoked a brisket for 12 <laughs> right i mean yeah it's not too terrible so so that's that's that um and that's what the uh the mash tub is so the process is you create your mash or, um, you know, you, you know, if you're doing all grain or mm-hmm. you just get your brew kettle ready and in your brew kettle, all you do is you, you bring it to like whatever your recipe or whatever you recommend. It's usually I've seen between, oh, it says right here, 160 and 170. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you let it sit and then you pour in your ingredients and you stir it in thoroughly. Um, if you're using malt extract. Um, or your mash as well, like, like you bring it to there and, and then it has to sit for like 30 or 60 minutes so i have to put it all together bring it to temperature put it all together in my tub in my brew tub uh, Mm -hmm. because i'm not doing a mash and um it all sits for six it's got to sit for 60 minutes and then um and then you bring it to a boil and then once you bring it to a boil that's going to be like another like 60 70 minutes or you know nine you know hour and a half 90 minutes whatever you you think says okay so this one right here the summary how to brew your own beer the first yeah. first one this is what i'm going to be doing based on the agreement so I, I, when i saw this i thought they laid it out really uh nice if yeah i should i should go get 
I should get you the recipe that the guys like that I have too. Um, uh, I think what I'm gonna do this weekend is investigate that uh, guy that gave me his um, it's uh, fresh hops from the valley. Uh huh. And I, I think I'm gonna investigate it and uh, see what what they have. Yeah. You so, know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna see if he has a website. So um so then it says uh you bring your your grains you know or you bring you bring it up to soak for 30 60 minutes right and when you do that like um they have them they have them grained up for me and they put them into a oh is it called like a, a a muslin a muslin sack and it's just like a like a tea bag it turns it into a tea bag with all your grains with all your flavors and that's going to sit in there like a tea bag when you're doing this first hour and then like you add like you know the malt and stuff and then let it sit and then uh um and then and or then you boil it and then i think that's when you add the malt i don't know it's you gotta follow directions Mm -hmm. but so basically it sits in there for an hour with the 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 grains with the grains that i have um they're already ready to go in a muslin sack so they're they just sit in there like a tea bag, and then when you're done, just like a tea bag, you pull them out, you let it drip dry, and obviously no squeezing, just like a tea bag. I squeeze my tea bag. <laughs> you're not a tea connoisseur, I guess. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no, people don't. Uh, they, they, I want to get all the goodness, but it says right here because this is um, do 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 right yeah. here, and um, one of the big things they say don't squeeze tea bags. And then yeah, you don't the, want they stress here to not squeeze because you can actually get some unwanted flavors in there. That's crazy. Yeah. Just it just makes you think about all the different things that you can squeeze into your beer. <laughs> so this is a bag, like it's like a tea bag stuff put together, and, it, and you do this, and mine's for sixty minutes, and then you add like the uh, the next steps is like you bring it to a boil, and mine's for like another sixty minutes, and then you add mm. the malt extract, the hops. And blah 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 blah. Mine mm-hmm. involves three, um, three hop introducements. I, I don't know what that would be called. The malt extract. Got to put it in there when it's boiling. The hops, and I do it in three intervals. I do like one right at the beginning of the boil, one with twenty minutes left of the boil, and one as soon as I shut the flame off the boil. Mm. So I add a little bit, like uh, like a little bit of hops. I forget the percentage or the the like how much you know like 0.7 grams i don't know what it is uh, but a little bit it's equal and it's the same type of hops each time for this recipe that i'm doing and then after that you have to bring it to a chill which is did you did you see the um the hop edition chart no is it on here yeah so okay so if you scroll up where you can see uh, uh northern brewer yeah. uh, on on the left hand side there's uh, articles and selections and it, so it goes how to make a beer uh preparation uh let's brew and under let's brew slightly down um okay so this is adding the malt adding the hops and uh they have a they have a little chart there and it's uh flame out and and they have minutes hmm. um I'm not sure. Um, okay. I don't know where you were to get there. Uh, so if you scroll all the way to the top. Scroll all the way to the top. Okay. And then, uh, like, you see uh, there's an How arrow. How to make a beer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then <clears throat> um, under, on the left hand, did I say right hand side? It's on the left hand side. It's on the left hand side. There's articles in selection. Oh, um, Which one are you under? Are you under Let's Brew? No, on the no, 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 no. Um, I'm on the how to how to make the 52brews.com. Hold on one second. I'll just send you a link. Yeah, you're on a different one. Yeah, you're still screen sharing. That's why I can't see your face. Are you kidding me? <laughs> how to make a beer. So yeah, sorry. that's the one I'm on. Oh. So if I'm screen sharing, can't you? Can't I you can, see my page? <laughs> I can see your page. Yeah, it's on a different one. Okay, so that's the. 
Okay. Uh oh. Well, uh, I got some technical difficulties here. Um, let's try to get him back up on the phone. I don't know. So uh, this is the page he was at, and it's it's uh here you are. Okay, so it's this is the page I found your page. So it's how to make a beer, fermenting, bottling. Yeah. Okay, so I was not on this page. Adding hops. Yeah, so right there. So that's similar to mine. So that that add hop chart, the hop addition chart. So at 60 seconds, you add U.S. Golding hops, one ounce. At 10, 10 minutes, sorry, at 10 minutes left, you add the Liberty, one ounce. At five minutes left, you add the, the Willamette, one ounce. And mine is all one ounce as well, but it's all the same hops. So that's going to be nice. I don't... I you know I don't have to deal with different hopses I guess. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, so luckily I don't have that. Um Yeah, it it it's pretty good. I mean, from what I've seen. So then after that, you bring it to a chill. Let's go back here. How'd it go? So after that, you got to bring it to a chill, which is like bring it down to uh, like 70 degrees ish. Yeah. So, so, okay. So wart is what you have when you start brewing. Uh, so you have the mash, which is like putting together your ingredients, unless you're doing the tea bag version, kind of like I am um with malt extract so the mash is like for all grains which is what i want to do more of and probably only of later on um but doing a mash like that i guess there's more room to mess up because there's an extra step and a lot of extra step like parts to it anyways so you have the mash and that's putting together all your grain flavors um and then you have the wort which is what you cook it in in your brew kettle when you when you let it when you let these sit for a little bit or when you let it boil, that's that's called that's called the wart. And wart is basically just uh um it's unfermented beer. That's what it is. Cause yeah, because like right after chilling it says remember, no yeast, no beer. Mm-hmm. So that's still the wart. So then right after the wart, you have your yeast that you have to pit, pitch in. And and right after your wart is when you now right in your wart it's boiling so everything's killed off no bacteria nothing mm -hmm. and then you bring it to a chill and now you have room for any bacteria to get in there and ruin your beer so that's where you have to be careful you put it into your fermenter and then you add yeast and then you let it sit you have to aerate a little bit um, mm -hmm. And you can do that just on these small batches by just um, shaking it, stirring it. Like you, they say, just shake the thing back and forth for like thirty seconds. Okay. Um, so you're you're just you're just you're gonna want to put air in that um, air bubbles through that uh, that liquid. Yeah, I guess, and I don't know the reason. Um, I just know the steps. Every everything I've seen says to do that. And Does so the yeast. Does yeast need oxygen in the water? Uh, it might. Uh, yeast is feeds off of sugar, right? So yeast feeds off all the sugar and everything in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what it ferments into then beer or anything. You know, that's what it is. So so then... Extreme heat will kill um, the yeast. Yes. So you can't you can't go higher mm. than like... Yeah, you, got, you need to ferment between like 65 and 70 degrees. And then dark. They can't have any like any light... You know, sunlight can kill them, and it's just, yeah, it's just not good. So, um, yep, so then you put the wort in the fermenter, and then you pitch the yeast in there, and then you have to let it sit for, like, one to two weeks, depending on your your thing. And the 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 yeast obviously releases um, 
CO2 and, and 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 will your thing can explode if it's not vented correctly which what? is yeah oh yeah um which i've dabbled in a little bit when uh when i i you know i learned how to make yeah yeah that jail the jail hooch i learned how to make that in jail and i, I tried to make it and if you don't crack the lid or vent it correctly your bottle is just going to blow up so with that being said there are in typical fermenters and the fermenters can be something as simple as a five gallon bucket which usually it needs to be a little bit more than a five gallon bucket because it there needs to be room for expansion um you know so if you're making five gallons of liquid then you know it has to expand a bit um it could expand a bit so what they have is just these little airlocks these little i forget i think they're called just airlocks and it's just like a little s tube that comes out of the top into um, into there's a water picture. on each side oh is there one on here yeah on the main link uh, a bubble airlock yeah i'm looking for it i may be past it oh. no i'll send you the link right now yeah i don't see it on here open that link and then just scroll down um half page and it's under um step three fermentation Oh, well, oh yeah, I'm on that page. That's what I'm on. Um, so, oh, this step by step. Well, transfer the wort, uh, pitching your yeast, fermenting the beer. Yeah. Okay. So at the top of this, this is a looks like a carboy um there's there's one stuck in the top of a carboy yeah i'm not seeing it um this is wait did i give you that am i not on the right one hold on uh is it the one i just sent you i don't know this is going to be the go to go to the uh chat yeah go to okay there you go down 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 yeah okay so right there okay. so in those things is going to be bubble uh, air or water okay. And then uh, the air will get forced through there. Or the CO2 will get forced through there. So. So now do you fill one of those chambers with water? So that because. Uh, I mean, it's almost like a sink drain. Yeah, you put water in there. So, it, yeah, it's just kind of like an S like an S trap or a P trap in plumbing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. That's all it is. Oh, right here. Seal your fermenter. Add an airlock store in a dark place. Um, ale should stay at 68 to ferment properly. Yeah. So the better temperature, the, the more you, uh, I wonder if like the closer you, I like numbers. So I would try to keep that 68 right. constant. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Some people have like fermenter, like, like they look like fridges or something that they can control the <laughs> temperature with, you know, or they make bags that you can put your fermenter in and then just add ice like packs to it if you need to, or move it into a warmer room if you need to. Mm -hmm. You have a basement, you know, I mean, you don't want to go too cold, but your basement would probably be good. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to use my basement. Yeah. And, um... I got <laughs> uh, here in my office or studio or up here in this spare bedroom, whatever I've got, my own air conditioning unit so i'm gonna crank that to what it needs to be and just leave it here for two weeks um so then after two weeks um during that two weeks time uh, okay so when you put stuff into the fer fermenter your fermenter needs to be sterilized so after you, after it gets like after you chill it mm -hmm. which can be a chiller which i did buy or like you just put it in a tub of ice in your sink and it does just fine. You just want it to get down to room temperature, you know. Um, after that is when bacteria is when stuff can actually get harm it and ruin it. And so you have to sterilize every single thing. So if you're, you're going to use a tube, if the beer is going to go from your, say, from your brew kettle has a spout at the bottom. And you're just going to run it, you know, drain it down into the fermenter instead of pouring it slowly. Mm -hmm. It has to be slowly. But that tube would then need to be sterilized. And so the sterilizing is just it's this solution 
that they say is like all food grade, blah, blah, blah. And it looks like a typical sterilized or, you know, sanitized, not sterilized, sanitizer, you know, and so like bubbles. And then you, you wash everything. Everything has to be sterilized good and then drip dried. And uh, there can be bubbles left in it. And they say don't rinse it because then you're rinsing out the sterilizer. So leave bubbles in your sterilizer. Hmm. That's interesting. But what, I mean, why do, why does there have to be bubbles in the sterilizer? Like, uh, well, that's just the sterilizer. It, it, it gets bubbles and they say to just don't, don't worry about it. Um, so, um, once you get it into your fermenter, then it sits and it's sealed, right? And it threw an airlock. Mm -hmm. Then during fermentation, sometimes people dry hop is what they call that dry hopping. So you don't do it during the, you don't, you add extra during the fermentation. Completely different than dry humping. Is right. that correct? Completely different. <laughs> and, uh, so that would be adding hops, like after like four days after like mm -hmm. six days and you add hops to your fermentation barrel and then even when you do that you still have to just be careful that you're sterilizing anything that you put in there but most people now do they have them. now are you cleaning will you clean the hops because i'm actually trying to look to see i don't think so because i well from what i've seen most people like keep their hops chilled anyways mm -hmm. and I, I know that it's not cold enough to kill anything but i don't i don't think you have to actually clean it unless it's been damaged or, you know, some of them, at least the ones I got came prepackaged. So okay. typically it should, you'd think it's going to be fine. But like if you buy it in bulk and it's not prepackaged, then, you know, it might be different. Mm -hmm. um, but the sterilizing is just for your equipment. So then after that, um, after you're done, you put it into what they call a, uh, um, like a bottling bucket. Yeah. And, from there, that bottling bucket has to be it. And then the hose has to be as well. Um, you know, sterilized. Everything has to be sterilized. So then in that bottling bucket is... Um, so so after fermentation, there's going to be like this sludge in the bottom of your fermenter. And so when you pour it... Okay, so on this website that I'm looking at... Um, yeah, I'm that, looking at... You see that fermenter, how it has that conicoid thing right there at the bottom? It cones down at the bottom. It's not flat yes. like a kettle. Yes, yes. So that's going to catch all of the sludge mm -hmm. down there. And then they have a spout above that, which is going to allow the clean wort to leave or beer at that point mm -hmm. to leave. And uh, no without, longer wort. without catching. Right. Yeah. Because it's fermented. So no, it's it, that that um, sludge, all that stuff is going to stay down there. And then you put it so I could I don't have to pour it and be careful to leave that down there. I can just drain it because I actually got one that looks similar to like this. Um, not, I don't have it yet. I'm getting it. Um, <laughs> but so I can actually Thank just open this it. spout, let it drain down into my, I don't like, I just have like a five gallon plastic bucket. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my bottling bucket. That has the same thing. It looks like this and has a, has a spout in the bottom of it. And then I just, you know, elevate it. And then I have a uh, bottler, bottle filler. Doesn't look like that at all because it's not nice. It's just a little plastic thing that has like a check valve. When you push it against the bottom of the bottle, it allows it to come out and you fill from the bottom up. I thought you were going to get that stainless steel one. Yeah, yeah, this one. I'm getting this, but I'm talking about the bottle filler. Oh, okay. So after it's in the yeah. bottling bucket, it's mine's just going to be a five-gallon bucket. Okay. And then I put that up. And then I, on the floor or the ground, wherever I am, I have a tube that comes down and I have the tube connect to a bottle filler, which goes into the bottle, check valve. As you push it down, plunger opens at the bottom of the bottle, fills up from the bottom up, fill it to the brim, stop, pull your tube out of it, you know, cause nothing's leaking out anymore. Cause it's got that yeah. check valve. And then that allows it to give you about the perfect a spacing you need to cap it yeah to cap it because you can't have it to the brim because carbonation occurs in the bottle really yeah okay so when you put it in the bottling bucket you add like 
processing salt. I forget or sugars. I forget what it's called exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, re- I was, I was yeah, actually so just reading that. add extra sugar to it. Sh- stir it's, it up. Um, and then uh, uh, cleansing everything, boiling your primary, your priming sugar mm-hmm. in 16 ounces of water after cooling um, <clears throat> directly into bottling bucket. Yep. Transfer your beer and yep. fill your bottles. Right. So that's adding extra sugar for your yeast that's currently in your beer to feed on after bottling to then carbonate and give that carbonation. So you now put you put that flat that beer in there over with that sugar. Over sugar, it's gonna pop the bottle, right? If you over sugar, yes. The sugars are made to. <laughs> it's a science, yeah. And they say it's like, what I was told is you buy you can buy things pre packaged. You can't go science. Science is last. But what the I was science. told is it's one ounce of the sugar, okay. or one gallon of beer. Okay. So if you're making a five gallon batch, you just get five ounces of that which comes in a package for me at my home brew store that i went to was just 99 cents for a five ounce package nice so buy one package put it in there make five you know for five gallons done Mm -hmm. just enough just enough sugar for them to in the bottling process so then you bottle everything pull that thing out the it goes down from the brim because uh you know science (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, you pull it out, you know, just like stepping out of a bathtub, you know, the water goes down and, uh, um, it goes down to a perfect spot for you to then just put your cap on. And I think they've got a capper here. Maybe not my capper. It's just, you just put a, you just put a bottle cap on. It just looks like a thing with like butterfly wings on each side and you just, mm-hmm. you just push it down on each side of the bottle. Um, oh, what are the ones I've seen? Oh, right here. Here's it. Red, that's what mine looks like, yeah. exactly like that. Yeah, I've also got this thing to, uh, I forget what it's called, yeah. but to tell, Backwards, well, um, to tell the bottle. ABV of the the beer after I'm done, too. Really? Yeah, like it's it's gravity-based. Like there's you put you get stuff in a stick, and then you have like another little stick that will float mm-hmm. based on your thing, and then it floats up to a reading. You read it, and then you can tell like what ABV your beer is. Nice. And that's how they tell. Yeah. So, yeah, can, you, can you tell how bitter it is? Yeah, taste it. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. if you dry hop too, that adds bitterness. That's. But um, I think dry hopping well, is per, per IPAs too. But yeah, so like IPAs, I thought that um, they would actually add hops to the beer before they shipped out to actually help um, um, all good grief uh, preserve it longer so then it actually gave a higher uh abv and it made it um just a little bit bitter yeah um, they might yeah i don't know too much about like bottling so that's that's what i was i at one point in time i was looking up how to make an ipa or what made an ipa and uh that's what that's what i remember right so then after you bottle your bottles then have to sit in the same dark and you know, 70 degree or 68 degree temperature place for another two weeks. Hmm. Really? Yep. And that's, um, that's for your priming sugars and stuff to keep to, uh, to work as well. Um, so and then after that, that, you need to let it sit in the, in the fridge, uh, for one day or so, like 24 hours before you, they recommend drinking it 24 to 48 hours, chilling it. For, for so it's it's a process so, once you brew you're not drinking it for 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 a month <laughs> so that's when you start your next brew because because you'll have to catch yourself up <laughs> right so so that's what i've learned now again i don't know everything i've never done it and i've got the malt extract and that's going to be a simple beer and my goal is to brew something that's almost foolproof like mm-hmm. it's it's foolproof like just pouring in the stuff i don't have to make the mash and then get a good beer and then build confidence to do it again <laughs> that's my goal yeah there's actually one here two gallon uh craft beer kit which is <clears throat> at the end of the month that's what i'm gonna buy mine yeah and uh the other thing is is i'm going to i um i left my wallet in my work truck 
So, I didn't so you can't buy there. it right now. Damn it. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to get on that guy's website and uh, check it out and yeah. uh, send you the link. So you need thermometers to tell that your wart and, and boil, everything comes to the right temperatures. You need, um, you know, you need a carboy or a fermenter. Uh, here's a graining mill to mill your own grains. You need, uh, you know, if you're going to do the all grain, you need the mash tub. You need a brew kettle and then a way to cook it. You don't need to have a brew burner or mm -hmm. a burner. You can do it on the stove. It's fine. Um, but you do have to make sure the stuff doesn't, like, boil over. And then you make a mess in your in your stove. And they say in the middle of a boil, if you boil over and you're in your kitchen, stop. Stop what you're doing. Clean everything up because it's a lot easier to clean up fresh than if you let it sit and bake on there, cook on there for 60 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's easier to clean up. You're not going to mess anything up at that point. You know, you're just... Point, I wonder how many divorces <laughs> after that, that very moment. So, lucky for me, I already have a kettle because I do... Uh, I don't do. I have done. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I do it like a low country boil, a seafood boil. And so I have a burner and a kettle. So I am set for that. My wife will, probably won't let me do it inside. So, uh, which is fine because I have the setup for outside. If I didn't have it, she'd probably let me do it inside because I, you know, whatever. Okay. But Please. since I already have this stuff and I don't have to buy it. So that was nice. I didn't have to buy this. So because I didn't have to buy these, I went for the little, like, little better fermenter. And mm -hmm. then I also, like, so the tubing to transfer stuff you know, and yeah. bottling is plastic tubing, right? And you're smart enough to know uh, how how hard would that be to clean? Dishwasher safe. Dishwasher safe. Yeah, fine. That's true. And it might be, and it may not clean at all, but it's going to be hard. And then when you go to sanitize it before next time you use it, you sanitize it very well. And that's mm -hmm. good. I, on the other hand, was like easier cleanup. Just boil the crap out of it. But you can't boil the crap out of a plastic tube. You know what you can boil? Silicone tubing. Oh, really? So I bought silicone tubing, which is a lot more expensive. You know, instead of like two dollars for five foot, it's fifteen dollars for five foot. Oh, that's not terrible. No, it's not terrible. And I, you know, I look at that like, you know what? Ease. That's like ease of like, you know, ease of life. Like, uh, what is that? Like, you're gonna save time just in cleaning. Exactly. That's exactly what I looked at. And for the fermentation. I mean, the fermenter, like a stainless steel, I'm going to save time mm -hmm. with cleaning instead of like a plastic tub. So I now, bought it know, also with hopes that I'm going to do it again. Stuff at, or huh? is it all over the place? Oh, before you bottle, you have to, have to sanitize all your bottles and bottle caps too. Anyways, what? I'm asking, um, do you have a link to the specific place you bought all your items at? Or uh, uh, did you buy them all, all, all on one website? Locally. Oh, uh, well, you can't beat that. Yeah, I would recommend looking online. You can find some good stuff online, but... Go down to your local lens crafter. Go look to, That's go, what I did. Go, go to, your, here, to right your, right here. I got the your local brewer who uh, gives out glasses. Yeah, dude, nothing's working for me. Not, not, <laughs> today, production value has just gone to shit tonight. Um, here, uh, old enough to drink? Totally. Um, so here, <laughs> here, here is a store and I've had you, these guys have the brewery right by my old house. I said, I've never been to, mm -hmm. they have yeah. a home brew store right next to it. You can buy all this stuff. So, nice. um, they have a, they have a kit, a starter kit, 77 bucks in store. So I'm like, well, mm -hmm. I bought my own fermenter. So take out one of those tubs, like, you know, one of those five gallon tubs. I don't need it. He's like, okay, so that takes your price down to, you know, that takes 18 bucks off your price, you know? So like I was able to mix and match and I'm like, you know what? I want ease, you know, ease of clean up. I want to be able to boil my thing. You know, my, you know, I want the different tubing. So don't give me that tubing. All right. Yeah. But I want this, you know? And then, uh, and then, you know, I went and I went and bought all the ingredients and everything. And like I said, I spent, um, uh, I, I bought a, a couple extra things. I also bought a chiller too. W one of those wart chillers. Have you seen those? What is a what is a wart chiller? Okay, let's go back to here. It's that with, with cone on the bottom, right? No, this no. is your wart chiller. So it's copper tubing coiled up with mm -hmm. an in and X exit of a like a water hose. 
you hook your okay, garden hose so up to it so it goes through and runs constant water through it well that's simple so instead of like putting my thing my or out bathtub with ice in it right i have this inside of it cleaning it mm -hmm. or cooling it down which they say now, goes from you know instead of 45 minutes like wart getting that? bacteria in it well you the wart chiller you would sanitize before you put it in there mm -hmm. or most people say like at the end of their brew like the last 15 minutes of their boil drop it in drop it and sanitize in. it yep so that's an option then you can run your garden hose through it some people have like a setup where they have two of these one of these are inside of a another barrel or bucket full of ice then it runs to the the other one inside your brew kettle so then it's cooling your garden hose water down before it gets to that Mm -hmm. you know and then you know then it's helping out a little better but you can always add ice and stuff but they say that the wart chillers if your garden hose isn't if you know if your groundwater is not you know your garden hose water is not too warm and in the south that can be a problem in the summer if it's not too warm yet you know doing that i live, can I live take right next to alaska so yeah I'll be doing that could take your time down from like 45 minutes in an ice bath you know 40 minutes in an ice bath to like 15 20 minutes so yeah so it's just i bought like i said i got that and that's they're kind of expensive I, I, you know but it, it's going to go a little quicker for me it's going to be a little easier for me and i you know i didn't go out and buy all out stuff you know i've i just went all out on a chiller and a fermenter not even all out i mean it's just i could have spent three four hundred dollars more on my fermenter <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, so then, uh, so this is the place I got it actually. So I, I live in Wilmington, um, North Carolina, and this is the place I got it. Uh, Wilmington Brewery Company, and uh, they've got a home brew supply uh, in front of their brewery, and you can go in there and, and you can buy everything you need to. But I think that's gonna do it for today. Uh, I did. I did want to. Let's. Can we cover one oh, thing? Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sorry not to uh, cut you off there. Oh no, this is this has been the uh, underproduced and uh, <laughs> this is the <laughs> underproduced show and uh, you know we're 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 sleep training a, a six month old so uh, had to step away in the middle you know that's just this is is what it is underproduced uncommunicated we're raw we're real life dads yeah it's, <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> um so basically. Just a, a quick overview of the science behind beer, is mm -hmm. I think that uh, is a, uh, important. Let me see. Um, so we can pull up here because basically, essentially, you're you're taking water and uh, you're making a mash and. Um, uh, you brew that water with everything in it. You're using uh, yeast to ferment that water, um, to and basically you flavor the water. Then you yeast it to um, ferment that water. Uh, you're using hops to um, um, uh, produce a taste in that water. You know, it's um, but is is the is fermentation. Uh, create taste. It has to. Science behind beer. Uh, yeah, yeah. They say that you you can like test your beer or taste your beer, um. Uh, throughout the process, because you can take different readings, like ABR readings, like. Throughout the whole thing. It says brewing is essentially for taste. Hops. Pop the bubble. Let's see what this says here. Link coming at you. Yeah, that's the link I'm on now. Or the site I'm on now, rather. I'm having a hard time typing today. <laughs> it 
So let's see what it says. The science behind brewing beer. Mm -hmm. So there's different things too. Um, so how I said like fermentation could take like one to two weeks or whatever. I think mm -hmm. like if you do a sour, you have to ferment for like five weeks or something. Really? I think. I haven't even looked into it, but I've heard people saying like, yeah, if I want to do like the longer fermentation, you know, I've not tried this on that, you know, or whatever. And they say like Ooh. with a sour. So everything is, is everything is done pretty much the same. All beers are brewed the same. It's just the ingredients and then the times. And then some people mess with the pH of water at different stages. And It just uh, says right here, water quality makes a difference. Yeah. Um, minerals. Dude, I'm probably going to have to get a bottle of water. My, I, have, uh, wait, I have a ton of minerals in my water. Uh, yeah. So what they say, what they say, if you get the malt extract, which I'm going to do, they say that um, that is all of the minerals that the water needs to create the beer that's you know in your recipe. So they recommend distilled water. I'm not sure. Yeah, it if I'm says calcium use this. and magnesium, which magnesium comes. I mean, you can get magnesium in your water wells. Um, calcium comes from other wells. I mean, essentially your um, city water. You do municipal wells, and that's where you get your uh, uh, water from there. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, like magnesium, slime bacteria, uh, calcium, iron deposits, mm -hmm. all those things affect the water that you're using. Right. Um, so, I mean, like, good golly, like, if you had, so my cousin has an RO um, uh, filter, mm -hmm. and um, that would be something that would be essential. You could... You could literally just do reverse osmosis and have um, crystal clear water. Yeah, yeah. And then you're adding the minerals you need with the malt extract. Now, mm -hmm. people do different, though. I mean, because if you're doing all grain, it may be different. You have to mess with the pH to get it exactly what you want or mess with everything the way you want it. So here's what I've read, though, is for your first time or when you're a beginner – to not even mess with the water. Like, yes, people mess with the water, and it can make a difference, but the big thing that makes a difference is doing things differently, timing things differently, right? Mm -hmm. Boiling it for 65 minutes at this temperature. You know, well, boiling is always 212 or whatever, but boiling it for a little bit longer, adding the hops mm -hmm. at this stage, you know, doing things a little differently, like, that's going to make the difference more than the water, like, at the beginning, because you're, if you're using a malt extract, they just say pretty much to not worry about it. If your water tastes good, then your beer will be fine. You know, that's kind of what, what I've heard. And then mm -hmm. once you get a little bit more in deep, like, with it, and then learning more about it, then you can start messing with the pH and all of that. So I, I'm not going to stress the water too much the first time, I don't think. I don't know yet if I'm going to go buy distilled water or use spring water. Ooh. You're a, I forgot you're a water snob. I am a water snob. I also, Wilmington has a very bad city water problem, so we don't drink it. Yeah, but you'll boil it. It'll take it out. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> the water treatment can't, plant can't take it out with reverse osmosis, so why would, <laughs> why would me boiling it in my beer take out this this chemical that Aaron Brockovich came and told us not to drink the water. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm always one to think positively. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I go, always... like, if I go get like the five gallons of water or whatever that I need, or whatever, you know, because you, you're going to burn some off by boiling it. If I go get that, like, I'm like, well, what's better? Just grabbing some purified water, grabbing some, yeah, some distilled water grabbing some spring water Did i don't you, know so i'm, just I'm probably just gonna run to walmart and grab those two and a half gallon jugs uh -huh. and fill those bad chickens uh those bad chickens up yeah i just yeah i don't i don't know what i'm gonna use yet i mean it would be nice to just be able to use city water i won't do that because i'm gonna be drinking this okay so the yeast okay this is um fermentation is a big science thing is that the yeast uh creates co2 which is called which is carbonation mm -hmm. um at the very end, 
uh, fermentation, the yeast converts the glucose into ethanol, which is alcohol, and CO2, which is carbonation. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, then they give a little breakdown. Yeah, so they say like uh, fermentation with the yeast to, to make different beers, darker beers, blah, blah, blah. The, it's the fermentation's different. You may have to ferment it for a little bit longer at a different temperature. All right, here. So they say uh, ferment. Uh, Budweiser's fermented at 15 degrees Celsius for two weeks, and they add wood chips during the fermenting process to help the yeast grow. Uh, Guinness um, ferments at 18 degrees Celsius for two to three weeks. Um, and then the beer is filtered and carbonated with nitrogen. Um, and then uh, this one's pretty much the same. Oh, it's not. It's the same. It's just not added uh, the nitrogen. Uh, Rodenbach. I don't know how to say that. I've never had that. So that's the difference between beers. Like everything's so different. But, like, the actual process itself for every beer is the exact same. What just happened? I just hit. Okay. I just <laughs> I, I just, I just got a pop-up or something from McAfee. I don't even know. Um, yeah, okay. So is there anything else you want to talk about? No, that's pretty much it. That's good. A uh, um, little, little unorganized and produced poorly today, but. Uh, I think it worked just fine. <laughs> but we got a, uh, um, um, it's, you know, it's first time back and we had like a week off. So mm -hmm. it was good. It was a good week off, even though we probably should have did a little. Uh, um, yeah, we saw each other in person on our yeah. week off. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought about that on the way down, but, you know, <laughs> I was going to be there and I didn't want to spend my time. Not to be selfish, but basically, I didn't want to spend my time in front of a computer with you, <laughs> time with your kids. So. Oh, I'd have done it, been fine. <laughs> oh, that's another thing too. There's siphoning too. So, like, if you have your your one vessel, um, where you transfer it to your like fermenter from uh -huh. your fermenter to your brew bucket, you want to siphon it instead of dumping it because of all that sediment in the bottom. And uh, so you siphon with tubing and they make these things called auto siphons that come in most like kits. And it's just like a, awesome. it's like a tube that you literally pull up on like one thing. It's like one of those slider toys that make, whoop, you know what I mean? It's one of those yeah. and it pulls up and then it's, it starts to siphon for you and then it'll, you know, go down and in, into your brew bucket. And you, when you do that from your fermenter, you have to do that into your brew bucket instead of pouring it because of that sediment in the bottom, which is why having me having that conicoid or conoid thing or whatever, the cone mm -hmm. at the bottom, it's going to help keep that all right there. And then I can even use my, uh, little drain valve. So now is, um, you know how they have unfiltered beers. Is that, if it's an unfiltered, these are all unfiltered so far. You can run it through a filter. Okay. Yeah. Everything we've talked about so is going to be unfiltered. You're still essentially going to get sediment. Um, it's just that not uh, as much as what is it? I mean, you can, yeah. So, so what the filters are is you can, and some of the process between like between <laughs> bottling or between your kettle and the bottling bucket where you have your uh, priming salt or sugars, you would run it through a filter mm -hmm. in, in your hose. And they make them, but I'm like, you know what? It's no big deal. As long as you keep that sediment fine, it's going to sit at the bottom because it's, you're, you're, your bucket's not moving for two, three weeks, right? And then if you barely yeah. move it, like if you in your basement set it up high, like on your like workbench yeah. for two to three weeks, you don't like have right to move it. Floor. You leave it up top. You put your bottling bucket on the floor, siphon it out of the top. You know what I mean? You're not moving it. That sediment's not moving. That sediment no. has settled. You know, yeah. all that all that stuff's going to settle, and you won't have to move it. Me, I'm going to be moving it up a flight of stairs. <laughs> So mine, mine has a chance of moving around a bit, you know. But it's fine. It's all good. I, can I have even... a feeling you're going to curse your few batches of beer. <laughs> You'll see. They say you know when it's bad. It just smells bad. It, I mean, it, it can get mold in there if any bacteria gets in there. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not good. 
Really? Yeah, it's 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 just like food, just like anything food, water or uh, anything you drink, anything like that. Like you can you you can tell when it goes bad. Huh. All right, let's wrap it up there. Let's end it. <sighs> uh, let's see. Sir? Yeah. Yep, there's bad bad production. I still can't get your webcam, but we're going to stay on this page anyways. It's all good. Uh, all right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscri uh, subscribe, and always drink responsibly. How yeah, about that? Always. That's a good one. That's what I always do. I never drink and drive. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth. I do take driving and drinking very seriously. <laughs> I am like, and I have been for like my whole life. I'm like, I don't have any fun, but I'm, it's good. It's a good thing. I'm still so alive. So what you're saying is that when you drive drunk, you're extremely serious. I'm extremely serious. <laughs> oh my god! I don't joke around. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to drunk, I'm not God. Oh my gosh! I forgot that was. <laughs> what seems to be the officer problem? <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, like the episode. Hit that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe on YouTube. Um, yeah, till next time. We'll, we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.